No sleeping. No yawning. Pay attention. It could change your life. It could change your life. What you put in is what you get out. How you listen is what you get out of it. Praise the Lord. Amen. A few more minutes, get yourself together. Turn to your neighbor and say, loving God, loving me, and loving my neighbor. That's our topic this afternoon. Loving God, loving me, and loving my neighbor. Praise God. Hallelujah. Loving God, loving me, and loving my neighbor. Praise God. We, we find in this generation there is an issue problem, a problem that affects families. This, this is an issue that affects family, jobs, churches, relationship, right? The issue is love, but the problem is also loving God and also loving self. The reflection of self-love is seen in the world how we treat people and our effect we have in the world and also our communities and also our home. The world have a problem. The church have a problem. The families have a problem. The marriage have a problem. The children have a problem. And the problem starts with love. We, we are love star. We are love star and we have a love issue. issues in our relationship and in the world, right? We are mirrored. See, the way you treat people is the way you love yourself. I always say that if you treat people shabby, that's just the way you feel about you. And when I look at it, I said to myself that a lot of people we expect to love us don't love themselves. How can they love you when they don't love who they are? How can they, they don't treat themselves right. They don't, they don't, they don't deem themselves. That's why a lot of times uh, uh, we got to deal with people and say, why is it that you treat me? That's the way they, they see themselves. That's the way they're mirroring how they feel about you. And I tell people that until people learn to love themselves, they can never love you. And a lot of times, even when I deal in the religious circle, we, we say loving God and that we love family. But how you going to love God and skip the family if you don't love you? Yeah, man. And I come to go against these things and say, you got to love you. Because if you don't love yourself, you're not going to love your wife, your children. You're not going to love your community. You're not going to love God. You see, it's loving God, then you got to learn to love yourself. And when we come at it, we are mirroring in the world. You see so much. You can have all the programs you want. You can have all the things, why people murder and why people do all these things. It is, it is going on until we fix the issues of love inside our own heart. Until we begin to deal with it. Until we begin to say, you know what? Self-love is something that we, because the truth about it, even in church and even in life, we've been taught not to love yourself. You've been taught to love your neighbor, but you don't love you. Because now the reason you have a problem with your neighbor is because there's a problem in you and how you deal with yourself and how you love yourself. And I can see how you love and loving yourself is so many ways that you can see people not loving themselves. We, we, we can see people give everything us to somebody else. But guess what? You don't give nothing to yourself. You don't love you. You don't care about you. You don't care about what's going on inside your heart and your mind and your soul. But now the Holy Spirit wants to deal with us with the love issue. There's a lot of people, there's a lot, there's a lot of hurt. And I know that most of the hurt in the church and 100% of the hurt in the church and 100% of hurt in the world is because of love. You understand that? It is because of love. It is because of love. That is why we have this issue. That is why we have this problem. Because we have a love problem. We have a love issue. We have a love situation. 
We got people who give their bodies because they love. They want somebody to love them. We got people who go prostitute, walk in the street because, because they want love. Yeah, I'm giving this part of myself, but what I want is love. You take the less in the relationship, and how can you want people who don't love themselves to love you? To care about you. And you begging them, love me, love me. Well, the question is they can't love you and they can't treat you the way they need to treat you. Because why? Because they don't love themselves. They are mirroring their hate for themselves to you. Amen. They're mirroring how they feel about you. And then most of our lives, we got people hurting. Because why? Because you start of love. You see, there's a famine going on. You say the famine is food, but the Bible says in the last day there's going to be a famine of the word. Yes. And guess what? The Bible says that God is love. So the thing is there's a word of love that people are starving of love. They want somebody to make them feel important. They want somebody to make them feel love. Marriage has been broken because guess what? I don't feel love. Men, all kind of things is happening because guess what? People don't feel love. Right, We're going with it today. We're going with it today. The world, our home, right? Is love star. Okay. Matthew 22, verse 34. Even right now, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus.
you know and how much you think you know the Bible, how much you think you, my God, you read it, but Jesus said, what is, see the Pharisees asked, what is the greatest commandment in the law? What is the top? What is the pinnacle of it? What is the most important thing that's in the world? Look at it, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. So the first thing that you got to know, you cannot love others unless you love the one that is love. That is the first commandment. You cannot love anybody else unless you love the one, my God, that is love. So you got to love him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your emotion. And some of us only love God in one sense. You love him with your money, but you don't love him with your heart. You love, come on now. But for you to know the dynamic of what true love is, you got to love God with every single part of your soul. You cannot love God with one part and hate him in the other part. But you you got to love God with every single being of your soul, with your money, with your mind, with your soul, with your spirit. You've got to love God totally and uncommitted in every single part of you. You've got to love him in every part of your being. And that's the biggest test that the world in the church need come out to buy. That you've got to love him with everything. You cannot love some people. You see, the thing is, when you love God half, that means you treat people one way and treat another another way. You don't got love inside of you. You've got love that has shades and darkness and light in it. But when you love God, you love your enemies. You love those who don't care about you. You love those who talk about you, who say all kind of things about you. That's when you know, my God and mercy, that you know the love of God is in you. Martin Luther King understand love because when they try to treat him bad, he turned the other cheek and he said, God loved them anyway. God cared about them anyway. My Bible said that God poured the rain in those who hate him, and those who love him, and those who don't care about him, and those who talk about him. That's what true love is. Let me tell you what true love is. That people abuse you and talk about you and treat you wrong. But when you come into the scene, you treat them as if they never done nothing to you. That's what true love. And you can't love that way until you love God first. So the world have a love issue. We got a love issue. We got a love problem. We have a love situation that's going on that we don't know how to love rightly. So Jesus said the first thing, he didn't say love yourself first. He said love God with all your heart, with all your soul. With all your mind, what do you mean that? With all your thinking, you love her with everything in your mind. You love her with everything in your soul. You have you love her with everything in your being. Meaning that, see, you got to put the glasses of love in. You got to see things in a different way. When you love, my God, you begin to walk in power. You begin to walk in glory. Because guess what? The first thing for you to love anybody or care about anybody. That's why I tell the young ladies, they don't love God, they can't love you. And I'm 
I'm not talking about you making a confession. Who cares about confession unless you continue and become, you see, you don't become a disciple unless you continue and walk in that thing. And let me tell you something, they cannot love you unless they love God in all three levels. Just because somebody say, I know him, don't mean you believe in him. No. Don't mean you, you love, you're walking in that love. Even those of us who profess having a hard time. Mm -hmm. Even those of us who say we love God, sometimes it depends on the time of the day it is. Okay. In the hour, in the second, that we begin to say, can I demonstrate that love? But if you want to walk in 24-hour love, if you want to walk in 24 hours love of God, you got to love him with all your heart, meaning that every part of you has got to be committed now. Yes. Every part of your life and every part of your soul got to be committed. And guess what? The reason you hurt it because people don't know how to handle you. <laughs> they don't know how to handle you. They don't know how to treat you. But you keep going back and forth again and again and tell them, love me, love me, care about me. They won't no! love you. Because they don't know how to love you unless the one that is loved is inside of them. Well, that's right. Amen. 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 I'm here to free somebody. I'm here to yes, deliver yes. somebody. You begging people, love me, love me, love me, care about me. Oh, they will love me someday. They will love me sometime. Let me tell you something. Not if you don't have God in you. Not if they don't love God first. The first thing that so people can love you and care about you is the way they treat God. And guess what? Not how they treat their parents. I don't know how you see, see ladies. You got to know how they love God, how that men love God, how that women love God, how that men care about God, how he worship God, how he praise God, how he give God glory. He cannot be loved inside of you unless he loved God inside of himself. My God have mercy. Now look at this. He said this is the first and greatest commandment. It's the first and greatest commandment. That the greatest commandment is not how much you speak in tongues and how much you come to church and how much you give is how much you love. And how much you love who? Not your wife, not your kids, not your job, but how do you love God first? That's the first thing. How do I love God? And how do you see? Now the second one is this, right? The second is like it, right? Love your neighbor as yourself, and that's the biggest problem. Yes. You cannot love your neighbor as yourself because you don't love yourself. Yeah. We're going to talk about self-love. Yes. When we look at people, how they talk to you, and how they treat you, and how they behave towards you, it is an expression of how they feel about themselves. Oh, God have mercy. Because guess what? When you look at your brother, that's a part of you. And we're going to talk about that right now. We're going to talk about this thing called love and how you treat people. We got people in church jealous, bad body, can't love nobody, can't care about nobody. This is why we got all these things in church, because they don't love themselves. And there's no difference between you and the world, because you act like the world. We know the world don't have God, and that's why they act the way. But the one who profess to have God, why is it that you act in the way you are acting? Maybe you don't have God. You got a profession, but you don't got working faith. You confessing that you got Jesus in your lips, but he's far from you in your heart. He's not in your heart. He's not in your soul. It is easy for me to love people that might not treat me wrong. Because guess what? It's hard, but it's a decision. Because he said it. If he's in me, he's going to help me to love them. It's not me loving them, but it's Christ loving them through me. God, if Christ be in you, he is the hope of glory. But I come to tell the church, there's a problem with our love. Because first, we don't love God. And first of all, we don't love our neighbors because we don't love ourselves. I've never been in an institution where there's supposed to be love and there's no love. Never been in a place which is called church where, 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 where people are supposed to walk a certain way, but we don't want to talk about it. We want to put it over in the carpet, but we are nasty. We, 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 we conniving. We're hateful. There's anger. There's hatred in the church. There's bitterness. There's backbiting. There's gossiping. And there's all kind of things in the church, and we don't want to talk about it. I'm tired of religion with a form of godliness denying the power of God, but it's time to clean the house and say, who is the master?
master of the house. Oh, glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say you love God, but how do you treat me? Uh, talk about it. How do you love me? Talk about it. You shout and you praise, talk about but how do you love me? Talk you shout the God that you say you love, but you hate the man that God created. Uh, talk about that, man. Oh, yeah. Talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, how do you do it? Yeah, you say your pastor is a gift, but you come, you see, he represents God to you. How do you treat him? Hi, God. How do you treat your pastor? How do you love your pastor? How do you care about him? Do you care for his need? Do you care for the things? Because all these represent that how you love God and how you love people represent how you how you how you love God. Don't say you love God in words alone. Words is not enough these days. Saying I love me is not. See, saying you saying you love me doesn't mean anything. But guess what? You got to bring their fair fruit worthy of repentance. What is repentance? A changed mind that you love God and God is in you. And there's a change in your heart because now we got to demonstrate that love. We got to demonstrate the love of God in our heart. We can no longer just speak about it. We are tired because guess what? People are dying all over the world because of a problem with love. People are dying in our blood because we don't like people or love people who look like me. But we got black t-shirt that say black lives matter. But every life matter to God. And we got to love it despite if we like it or not. Because God is love. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. God is love. He said, this is the greatest commandment. And I don't care how much Bible you know. And I don't care how much you can decipher the word. And I don't care how much you can learn it in the Hebrew, in the Greek. And I don't care if you got a mega church. And I don't care if you got 30 to 35,000 people in your church. If you don't walk in love, God is not in there. If God is not in the house, it doesn't belong to God. It's a mass called bills above. It doesn't matter what's going on. God got to be the center of it all. Oh, God, be mercy. Like the writer said, Jesus is the center of it all. Are we creating houses that God is not the builder, that God is not the center of that love? Yeah, you got you get prophetic gifts, you got anointings, you got this, but guess what the Bible was saying? Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, because there's no love inside of you. My love is not inside of you. We do not equate God with anointings and gifting. The devil is gifted. The devil we got some type of anointing. But guess what happened? How we know that God is inside of us? How do we know we have escaped from death to life? Is that Christ, the love of Christ, is inside of us. The love of God is inside of us. And it's demonstrated in how you see me in everyday life. See, the love of God will constrain you, will control you. It will keep your mouth shut. Yes. A lot of times. <laughs> Every time. Especially when you want to tell people about himself. Oh, Lord. You, it's the street right there. She's she loves it. Praise the Lord. It will constrain you. <laughs> yes. It will hold you. It yes. will tell you don't say that. It will tell you don't cut your eyes. Yes. It will tell you, no, no, you don't act that way. That's not the way yeah. you act. That's I've right. never been in a place uh-huh. where the place where you're supposed to get so much support, you get so much support. Yes. Yes. Support, but so much hell. Yes. We don't support each other. We don't fight each other. We don't come against each other. We fight and fight and fight against each other. Every chance we get, instead of pulling, we jealous of one another. The Bible said, if you bite and devour one another, guess what happened? You shall be what? Destroyed. We are destroying ourselves. Ain't no devil. The devil's only working through you. Yes, yes. The devil is only working through you. Because guess what? After this message, this week, you're going to act nasty towards each other. No. The first chance you get, the first chance you get, you're going to come in and begin to act a certain way. But it's going to demonstrate how do you hear that word today? Are you going to repent after this word? Are you going to change your mind after this word? You can jump all you want. You can shout all you want. But are you going to walk in love? Because the truth about it, without love, there's no power in God. There's no power in God. Now look at this. All the law 
in the prophets hang on these two commandments, loving God and, 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 and loving your neighbor. What is of the Lord? You see that hanger here? See? All the law hang on it. All the word of God hang on these two things, which is what? Loving God and loving your neighbor. If you don't have that, you don't got no word in you. Oh, I know God is with me because I'm anointed. Because I'm shouting. Because I'm doing this. Because I'm doing that. But guess what? But guess what happened? You have to know that God, oh God is going to work it out. You understand what I'm saying? God is going to work it out and God is going to do what he got to do. All of it hangs on that. All of the law hangs on that. All of the law of God hangs on love. If you don't have it, you don't have none of it. You understand that? If you don't have it, none of it is in now, 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 now look at this. It is accepted. It is a yes, yes, yes. Now, now, now look at this. Because truth is being told. Yes. Now look at this. Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy 6. De Deuteronomy chapter 6. Verse 4. Go ahead, bro. Hear, O Israel. Uh -huh. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. I'm going to show you something why you broke and why things are not happening. Right? Because it says that on these two laws hangs all the word. What, what is the word that hangs on the law of loving God and loving your neighbor? Prosperity, healing, deliverance, and all of it. It's a curtain. And all of these things hold the word together, put everything in perceptive. If you don't have these two rods, there's nothing to hang it on. Let me show you this. Right? These commandments that I give to you today are to be all on your hearts. Now look at this. Impress them on your children. What is that you need to impress on your children? Loving God and loving their neighbor. And they cannot love their neighbor unless they love themselves. Amen. So you need to impress that on your children. You got to love God. And you have to love your neighbor. Now look at this. He said, to, he said this, talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk on the road, when you lie down, when you get up. He said, talk to them. Instead of watching TV all day, turn, talk to them and tell them that love God, love people. Now look at what he says here. Tie them, right, as a symbol in your hands, right, as a ring, and bind them on your foreheads. Write them in the door frame of your house. How important is these two commandments that God said, put them in your head, put it in your forehead, meaning put it in your mind, and put it in your doorpost. Don't forget about loving God and loving your neighbor. And look what he says here. When he said, write them on the doormat frames of your house, on your gates, write them all so you can remember. That's how important this thing is. And he says this, when the Lord your God bring you into the land, he swear to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large flourishing cities you did not build. House filled with all kinds of good things. You did not provide wells. You did not dig and vineyards and olive groves. You did not plant. Then when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Fear the Lord your God. Serve him only and take your oath in his name. Do not follow my God, other God, the gods of the people around you. For the Lord your God, who is among you, is a jealous God, and his anger will burn against you, and he will destroy you from the face of the earth. That's how important that this thing is. You can't forget it. You gotta write in your door frame. You gotta tell your children, because that's what's gonna bring you to the land of prosperity. That's what's gonna bring you healing and deliverance. That's when you do the checking to make sure that everything in your life is gonna come, because why? I love God and I love my neighbor. You cannot love your neighbor unless you love yourself. Now the question is this, who is my neighbor? Well, Who is your neighbor? That's the question that all of us have. Who is my neighbor? Some of them are so fake. It says here, your children, your wife, your husband, your aunt and your uncle, not just the God who lives next door. Not just the God who lives next door to you, 
You got people who sleep in the same bed. That's your neighbor. You got people who live in your same house. That's your neighbor. That's who you treat right. There's some people who, who treat other people outside their house more right than they do the people who live inside their house. Now we're going to take this question a bit, right? Let's go into Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Let's go look at it. Verse 25. Let's take a look at it right here. 1025. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Say, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is, he said, what is written in the law? What is written in the law? He replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Now he said, good, we have answered correctly, Jesus. If I do this and you will live. You see that, right? Yeah. If you do these things, you're going to live. You're going to go into the life that God would want you to have. But he wanted to justify himself. That's what most of us want to do. We want to justify this whole thing here. Yeah. We want, so he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? See, that's a word of justification. I want to get it right. Who's my neighbor? Now, Jesus is going to answer you about who is your neighbor. And reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And when he was attacked by robbers, they stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went, went away, living half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. He passed by on the other side. So this is what a priest, and the thing about it, we expected the priest to have love in his heart. We expect them to have love in his mind for this man. Because one of the things about being a priest is to have compassion. One of the things about being a believer is to have compassion. And guess what happened? Sometimes we pass by the road and we see people hurting. We see people broken. And guess what happened? We don't do nothing about it. And guess who is the neighbors that's outside of you? There's people in your house hurting. There's a people in your home hurting. There's people in your neighborhood hurting. There's people all over the place hurting. And guess what happened? We don't do anything about it. But the question is, who is my neighbor? The people that you expect to do the right thing is the people that do the wrong thing. You see, the thing is, we got to get it right. We need to understand this here thing. We expect a priest not to pass him. We don't expect the priest to just ignore him. We don't expect the priest not to have compassion. And the Bible said we are priests and kings of God. And how is the compassion of the church is going to be judged when we're not demonstrated? It's not good enough to wear the robe. It's not good enough to have the title. It is not good enough to have all these collars in our necks and have all these other things. But we don't put Jesus in our heart. We got to put him in our heart. We got to show compassion. So Jesus said, the man, the priest saw him. He didn't do nothing about him. Who is my neighbor. So to a Levite worker in the house of God right? When he came to the place and saw him pass by on the other side, right? He saw him and he moved on the other side. How many times when we see the hurt of people, we move on the other side? How many of us, we see certain things that people are hurting and broken and guess what we do? We move to the other side. We turn to the other side. Matter of fact, we talk about them. Matter of fact, we, we say all kind of evil things about them instead of picking up people. What is Jesus saying? We got to learn in this walk. There are some people who are going to fall and our job is to be able to pick them up. It's our job. It's supposed to be able to take care of them. It doesn't mean they're less because they fell. It doesn't mean they're less because they're going through something. But the key about it, you are able to pick them up. You are able to just do something about their situation and not just get tired of people, not just get fed up with people. We got to keep demonstrating the love and bend down and pick them up in their situation. But look what he said. He said, but a Samaritan, who is a Samaritan? He don't, you see, he was a Jew, but, but turn away from the Jewish you know, faith. You know, he, he's not considered a full Jew. He's not considered to be, he's, he's, he's considered from type of a, 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 a person who don't believe. But guess what happened? But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. Yes. He went to him, and meaning that pity, you have compassion on that man. You have a compassion. He got beat up, and guess what happened? He went to him and bandaged his wounds. And that's what the church, we need to start doing. Yeah. We, we open the wounds. Yeah. Instead of bandaging yeah. the wounds up. Yeah. Pouring all, what is all and why? 
You talk about your healing. See, oil, there's a bond in Gilead for the healing of my people. We got to learn with the love of God in our heart. We got to learn to heal people. Yes. Give them restoration yes. again. Yes. Look what he did. Then he put the man on his own donkey, mm -hmm. brought him to an inn, and took care of him. Mm -hmm. The next day, he took two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you by any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of robbers? Which one? The one that went and took care of him. The one that saw the need and met the need. Because guess what happened? This will change our walk life. When we understand who is my neighbor, Anyone that is in close proximity to you. Anyone that is close enough. Can I tell you who is your neighbor? Not just the God who lives next door. The God who speaks a different language. The God who don't look like you. Can I tell you something? It is anybody that's in the earth. Anybody that's in this planet, we're in the same air that you do. That's your neighbor. Amen. That's, see, the thing is, most of us will not help people because they don't believe what we believe or look like you. It doesn't matter. A person, culture, where they come from, and what they believe, does not excuse you from being who God called you to be. It doesn't excuse you. It doesn't take away the commandments of God. The commandment of God on loving God and loving your neighbor exists even if you don't believe in it. It exists even if you don't believe in, on, 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 on God. You may believe in, in Confucius or whatever you believe, but it still works. It still hangs the law on it. So who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? And look at it. The expert in the Lord replied, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. What it is? It's not well enough to know but you got to practice it. Yes. It's not well enough to just listen to this word and just say, good message, I like it. But it's supposed to change your heart. It's supposed to, you to go in out there and begin to practice that love. Amen. Amen. But guess what? For you to practice that love, you got to deal with the issue of self-love. How do you love you? How do you care about you? Too much. How do you feel about your own self when you look in the mirror? I love you. Do you look at what the world is saying? No. Do you look like what the commercials and the books and the television and the music is telling you to be? Or do you look at yourself? You may not be perfect to other people, but God made you perfectly. And God loves you as you are. And you are the portal on which you can demonstrate that love of God for your life. Yes. So the question is, this afternoon is, who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Who is the one that I'm supposed to, um, do I show it only to my best friend? That's why in church we develop cliques. And you say you love God. Anybody can love anybody that likes you. Anybody can love somebody that agrees with you and, and, and agree with your mess. You're like, I love them. That's my friend. No, no, no. Can you love people who you may not agree with because it's a commandment? It's not a feeling. It's a commandment. It will break the atmosphere of cliques in the church. It will break the gossiping, the hatred, and the bitterness, and all these things that's going on inside the church of God. But guess what you begin to do? It will open up a doorway for the power of God to come in and begin to heal and begin to deliver and begin to set free God's people yes. and begin to do something that you have never seen before. Because guess what? If I walk in loving God first, right? See, nobody, Paul said, nobody had seen God at any time. Jesus demonstrated that love. They asked him, right? The disciples said to him, Jesus, show us the Father. And he said, I've been with you all along. You couldn't see me. Guess who was doing the healing? 
Guess you think he was setting people free? He was the Father in me that doeth the work. Amen. And guess what? That's what the Bible said. Jesus said, I'll go away. Yes. And greater things you should do because I go away to the Father. Amen. Right? And the Bible said this, greater is he that's in you yes. than he that's in the world. Yes. And guess what? The first thing that showed that God is one thing to say you love God. It's another thing to say God is in your heart. But the proof is in the pudding. The proof is not just you talking. It's not just you lifting your hands on a Sunday and meet your quarter and do what you want to do. And praise. And you can have a collar. You can be pastor. You can be prophet. You can be whatever. But the one will be, it will be tested what's really inside of you. The one will be, we're going to see the love of God inside of you. Can you turn away to people who abuse you and still show them love? See, that's why there's no revival in the church. Because there's no revival in you. Because the thing is, you're a wrong representative of the kingdom. Yeah. And guess what? When we, you say, yeah, I'm a believer. You go to your job, you go home and say, I believe God. What about believing, showing the love to that person who don't know God? Yeah, you chose them right before you got saved. But now you got saved, they're not saved. Don't think that person is less because, because now you, you should have never seen that. Now, now you keep working, you keep working, you know, when, when, and, 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 and show love. That person will leave, that's on them. But my thing is this, right? And if you are not, not saved, you get involved with them, you shouldn't. Right. Well, that's right. Shouldn't. Not gonna lie. You should not. You're gonna have hell. You're taking a chance and you're taking a risk because they may not want what you want. That's right. Amen. 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 And your life will be hell because you made a choice. That's right. And it's one thing you make the choice if you don't know. But if you do know and you make the choice, that's on you, not on God. Oh, come on, oh God, take it. When you go in that job, show the love of Christ. You don't need to preach. Let me tell you something. You don't need to preach. Amen. You don't even need to open the Bible because you are the epistle of God written by the hands of God. When you show kindness in that job, they don't say something different about you. Well, why do you act the way you act? Why are you so it exude out of your see the, the love of God just comes out of you and people are gonna feel it. And they're gonna say there's something different about you. The way you act, you come untied on your job. You're not late. That's love, that's showing love. As a believer, you're not taking any chance for anything to take away the witness. Yes, right. I come to work early, 10, 15 minutes, prepare myself. Right. You wait, they gonna say, hold up, I come here 20 minutes after. Why are you here so early? You, you don't play time on your job and try to play and say, I'm a believer. And then, and then guess what? You, you're stealing time. Right. Oh, that's true. And you, you, you come back to work on, uh, you know, you, you come back to work before time. And guess what? You stay a little late though. Yeah. <coughs> or, you know, guess what? They're not paying you for it. I don't care. I'm, I'm working on my ankles. I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing them to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And guess what? God will not only increase people to come to you, but they will, God will begin to increase you in life. When you go to the church, it's not just saying, I'm a member. No, just because you profess doesn't mean you believe in you. Let's see you continue. Let's see the first fight happen. Do you know how to hold your mouth? And yeah, yeah, that person may be wrong, but can you take the blame for the sake of peace that we may go and, 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 and brother unity, the unity of love of God? You don't have to be right about everything. You don't have to, to be the one that's, that's right about every issue, every problem. If we learn to take, to take the wrong for the sake of peace, for the sake of love, for God to be magnified. You may be hurting, but God will be magnified. He'll heal you. He'll be all right. And guess what? Sometimes you have to let the Lord fight your battle and victory be yours. And sometimes if you fight, you may lose. But guess what happened? I'm all in for the unity of love because I know that if I don't love God, and love my neighbor, everything else I do will not stand. Right. Nothing will work. You can pray, heal me, but you're not, you don't have no curtain enough to hold, up, hold it up. Amen. See, you don't got no rod to hold up the word of healing, of deliverance, and your peace, and your joy, of nothing. Why? Out of these two things, the whole Bible, if you want to ask me, I don't need to write a commentary. I can put it in four letters. 
And you try to, oh, let me give you the difference in Hebrew. That's nice. That's nice. That's real good. That's real nice. It's good you can do it. But I'm going to put the whole thing. Write an S in the Bible. L O V E. Love. Amen. The message to the planet, to the church. Not only, so you think the message is only to the church. The message is to mankind. God is love. When you put it only to the church, if you limit it, it is not only to the church. It is to the world. The church is supposed to demonstrate it to the world. So far. Amen. Amen.